Yeah, I think we're good to go. Uh, Lord willing, tonight we we're gonna look at the uh, at least continue talking about the four living creatures, the four beasts. Uh, I think last time we talked about the glory of God, and then hopefully <clears throat> this time around we'll try and uh, bring the verses together. Let's see. If you give me one second, let me try and get set up. Just bear with me. The four living creatures. The first thing we want to do is to go back to the very beginning. We have to search the Bible for the word creature. And when we do, it appears that God has in view there the body of Christ, that is the church. Anyone disagree with that? The, the creature, the body of wheat and tares. Let both grow together until the harvest. Now this is not an easy uh, topic. It's not an easy area. And I have a, uh, quite a bit of verses to share. And, and then we'll open for uh, discussion. Gregory, hi, welcome. Oops, let me remove the, the red dot. Okay. Hang on one second. Right, okay. So we're looking at the the creature the word creature Genesis 9 verse 12 and God said this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living I think I missed the word yeah creature for perpetual generation and then we read in Isaiah chapter chapter 13 verse 21 but wild beasts I'm gonna go kind of fast with these uh, if I'm going too fast, maybe you can stop me, and I can comment more on the uh, a certain verse. Michael, hi, welcome. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 21. Wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. Now we can tell, I think, just by looking at the context, that this is a judgment of God on the church, on the body. So it's not surprising to see that God is talking about doleful creatures here. We're trying to look at the word creature, first of all, before we go any deeper. Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Is this talking about, well, I think, even without, without looking at the, the spiritual nature of the Bible, we're... We, we look at this verse and then we're thinking, okay, well, go preach the gospel to every human being, every person. Uh, there's another way of looking at that. I'm not going to get into it right now. But the idea of going into all the world with the gospel, I think, has to do with going to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the gospel goes to all the world. The church is established in the world. But really, God is reaching out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what I believe the Bible means by all the world. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 25. <clears throat> Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature. You see that? The creature. Now this is the creature. I believe we're looking at the church now under the judgment of God. Uh now the the body of Christ worshiping the sun moon and stars they worship the creation the word creature is another name for creation I believe so I think we can see again that the primary focus of the word creature or living creature is the church Romans chapter 8 verse 21 because the creature that is the creation uh, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 39. Neither height nor depth. Nor height nor depth. Nor any other creature. That is the, the church itself. What God have joined together let not man put asunder. Is not able to separate the elect. The believers from the eternal um, salvation that they find in Christ. 
nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new what? creature. He is a new creature. Now we're looking at, we're no longer looking at Babylon, the old house, but rather the new heavens and a new earth. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. And a third part of the creatures. Can you see this? How this would be looking at the judgment beginning at the house of God. The believers having to uh, having had to endure the great tribulation. So the third part of the creatures were, which were in the sea and had life died. The third part of the ships were destroyed. Any questions on this part here? The name of the study, Living Creatures, and I'm offering right now, just looking at the, the wording, Living Creatures, or the word creature, it is focusing primarily on, on the church, on the corporate body, on the body of Christ. Alright, let's look at Living Creatures having to do with lightning. And I think some of you may already know what I'm going to offer, perhaps, as a conclusion, that the living creatures there, well, let me hold up, let, let me wait on this. I'll come back. We'll look at the summary at the end. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse... Yeah, oh. All right, something happened here. I thought I had... I got to pick up the rest of this verse Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13 oops and that didn't post hold hold on one second just bear with me as for the likeness you know this isn't posting simply because for some reason the formatting maybe it's too long or I, I probably have too much too much coloring here Let's try it again. Alright, this is not posting. Probably, uh, like I said, I think I have too many colors. Let me read the verse, Ezekiel 1, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living... Well, actually, I think I can do it in two parts. Yeah, let me try this. <laughs> Part 1. Yeah, there it is. And then let me go ahead and post the, the second half of it. As for the likeness of the living creatures, that second half didn't take. Maybe I have to do it in three parts. <laughs> Almost there. Hmm. Yeah, it might be the formatting. For some reason, sometimes Pal Talk is very, uh, very selective when it comes to allowing stuff on the screen here. All right, well, that's the first part of the, uh, of the text of the verse, and then I'll just read the rest of it. That happened to you last week? Yeah. Okay, so as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and it went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning alright so that's the the latter part of this verse now notice again here God is talking about the living creatures and then he is including uh, burning coals of fire lightning now we'll, I'll see if I can mention a little bit later that when the Bible speaks of fire, depending on the context, it is looking at the judgment side of God. But yet we've already talked about, at least I've offered in the room, that the judgment side of God is that God operates through Babylon, through a third party, like he did in the Old Testament. <clears throat> he sent the, the nation, uh, the heathen nations, to destroy Jerusalem and Judah. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, with uh, the fire, it is the fire, the wrath of God 
coming out of the uh, the word of God coming out of the mouth of the false prophets but there's also a, a salvation side to the fire the same fire that judges Babylon is the fire that refines the believers judgment beginning at the house of God all right very interesting topic uh, we'll try to expand on that a little bit uh, next time Lord willing all right, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 14. Let me see if this will post. Okay. Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. Now, notice the latter part of the verse. I, I just got through mentioning there is another side of fire. Okay. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Okay, and I think that's probably what's in view there. So there's a lack of salvation when it comes to the fire, but yet at the same time, uh, you know, the word of God is a two-edged sword. There is the uh, uh, the aspect, the element of the sword that that cuts and judges the uh, the unsaved body, but then there is uh, the word of God also that refines the elect. So there we find the gospel once again. Psalm 106, verse 18. <clears throat> and a fire was kindled in their company the flame burned up the wicked okay so notice it's the flame that's burning well we understand today that God's judgment is on the church is on Babylon right so how is the flame burning the wicked well some people might have you believe that the believers are judging the world and that the fire is coming out of their mouth. Now I don't see the Bible to be, you know, teaching that. Yeah, the believers are judging with Christ. And so they have power over the unsaved. They have power over the wicked. And it's the wicked that the elect, the believers, as, uh, as well as Christ, are using as the weapon of destruction. That makes sense? Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 14. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. So lightning uh, having to do with the light uh, that shines forth in the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. Psalm 144 verse 6. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. All of which, again, I believe it is speaking of... Babylon, the church, the unsaved body. That's where the fire is coming from, the false prophets, the false Christ. That's the nature of the judgment. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 30. And the Lord shall cause his glorious. Now, we're going to see something, Lord willing, very, very interesting uh, later on. Uh, looking at the glory of God, the holiness of God. And the Lord, the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall shew the lightning down of his arm and the indignation of his anger the anger of God is Babylon the fact that he allows the church he allows the the locusts the thieves to come that's his anger the fact that they're not bringing a gospel of salvation they're bringing a gospel of doom a gospel of judgment right and the flame of a devouring fire Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14 we see uh, similar language wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts because ye speak this word behold I will make my words in thy mouth fire now I don't see how we can miss this God you know in his mercy I believe he gives us the 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 answers the solution the Bible is its own interpreter he defines the term Eric writes, the glory of God is also God using, yes, yeah, but <clears throat> something else I was noticing today, Eric, and, and I'll talk a little more about that when I come to those verses, the idea of uh, giving God glory, that Babylon giving glory to God, okay, all right, so I will make my words in thy mouth fire, so right away, I think we see that the false prophets, the false Christ, they come with signs and wonders, they come with a destructive gospel that's the fire it is also the mouth of God because they're coming in the name of Christ 
They're coming in the name of Christ. So God is able to speak as if he is the one doing the judging, right? And there it is, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Our God is a consuming fire. God is able to judge and destroy, and the fire is also able to, to redeem. Okay, now let's move right into some of the uh, the more challenging verses here. The living creatures looking at the wheels and the wings. And and I think it's not surprising that we're going to see that the living creatures, the wheels, the wings, what do you suppose that's pointing to? What do you suppose is in view there? As God is formulating a uh, a portrait and making it demonstrate or show that it is God, it is the glory of God. But as I mentioned just now, it is the glory of God that is shining forth through Babylon, through the wicked. So even the living creatures, the wheels, the wings, all, I believe, are pointing to Babylon. It is the judgment side of God. Babylon is the judgment side of God. Sean Rogers, hi, welcome. We're looking at a, uh, I'm offering some verses on about, in a Bible study here. You're welcome to stay. And after the study, after I'm, uh, you know, we're, we're done looking at some of these verses, we will open the room for a discussion. All right, now, keep in mind, we're looking at the living creatures, the wheels and the wings, again, I believe, uh, are pointing to... Babylon. Psalm 83 verse 13. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. A stubble before the wind. Proverbs 20 verse 26. A wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. Isn't that interesting? brings the wheel over them and here's another area what about the cherubims or the seraphims what do you suppose is in view there Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 9 when I look behold the four wheels by the cherubims one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by another cherub and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of barrel stone now, you know, we look at uh, some of the language here, the stones, very precious stones, and right away we might uh, be tempted to think, at least I was, that God is talking about salvation, right? <clears throat> but here's an, uh, an interesting connection, Lord willing, I think you might, uh, you might appreciate. Let's look at, first of all, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. <clears throat> God is uh, talking about King Tyrus, uh, the king of Tyrus which I believe is a, a type or a picture of Babylon there. Thou, king of Tyrus, has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. You see that? The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel. So there, God, I believe, is, is giving us a, a portrait of the state of the church, the glory of the church, Prior to the, the falling away, prior to the church becoming Babylon, it was a reflection of Christ. And then also, I think later on, we read about the... Uh, well, let's look at some of the verses. In verse 14, Ezekiel 28, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have said thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. There I think we're getting a picture of the fact that Satan was a part of the kingdom. God, uh, he was created perfectly, just like the church. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, remember even when Job was being afflicted, he was able to go into heaven. So God, I think, is giving us a picture where... Uh, the cherub or, or Satan, the king of Tyrus, ultimately they're pointing to Satan. The fact that she was beautiful or the, the, the glory that God had given to the church, to the body of Christ. Precious stones was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel. 
Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Uh, Revelation chapter 18 verse 12 picks up this language. I think we might be able to make a connection there. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones. Right? And why do you suppose God would be talking about precious stones, merchandise of gold and silver, things that ultimately uh, belong to someone who is well off someone who is rich now look at verse 17 Revelation chapter 18 for in one hour so great riches is come to naught so I think there we're looking at the death of the church the death of Babylon and notice in Daniel chapter 10 verse 6 his body looking at a certain man his body also was like the barrel and his face has the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire now again the context there is uh, suggesting I believe the, the wrath of God it is a judgment side of God and if it's a judgment side of God it's the word of God in the mouth of the wicked that is burning the wood the hay and the stubble right I will make my words in thy mouth fire so there we do that's where we see here the Eric posted, uh, yeah, exactly, Eric, the mouth of Babylon. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Uh, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. The Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Now, these verses, they're very difficult to, to understand. And the reason for this, I believe, is because God is giving us two pictures. He's talking about Christ, and He is giving us a description of Christ. But yet, that description is in the form of exactly, yeah, at the very, at the same time, that description is looking at the judgment side of God, who comes with Babylon, the false prophets, to allow the church to destroy the church. That makes sense, right? And that's why it, it might be a, a bit of a challenge to, to understand that. Because you're looking at God here is talking about Christ. Okay, the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow. <clears throat> and the hair of his head were white like wool. And in the latter part, his throne was like a fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. Well, yeah, because God is coming in judgment with Babylon. Right? Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 10. And as for their appearance, they four. Now God is focusing quite a bit on the number, uh, the number four here, which uh, I think is is looking at the you know the the judgment on the entire body, and the days uh, when Christ is revealed. They four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. And I offer just now that the wheel there, I think, in the context is talking about the unsaved body. Uh, Ezekiel 10, verse 14. Every one of them had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. Okay? And we saw the cherub, uh, thou art the anointed cherub. The second, uh, the face of a man, a lion, and of an eagle. Okay, well, let's try and follow that through. Revelation chapter 4, verse 7. And the first piece was like a lion. Well, we know the who is a lion in the Bible. We know Christ is a lion of the tribe of Judah. What about the unsaved body? What about Satan? Is he also known in the Bible as a lion? He goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So can you see the connection there? So it's a lion, a man, a calf. The calf there, I think, is pointing to Christ. Not Christ per se, but who? In the context of the four living creatures with burning fire, with the wheels, coals of fire, the context indicating the judgment side of God. What is the calf then referring to? It would have to be talking about not Christ, but Antichrist, right? Yeah, yeah, Antichrist, because 
it's the name of Christ. You know, it's, Satan is very deceptive in his judgment. And it's very hard to see that uh, unless we, we look at enough uh, verses, enough information in the Bible to try and pick up the, uh, the main thread. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, uh, they four had the face of a man, a lion, an ox. There it is again. That's another word, I think, pointing to the Lamb of God. But we know in tribulation, in the day of the Lord, Satan comes um, looking like a lamb. And then also the face of an eagle. All of which, I think, Lord willing, we can tie into the, the unsaved body. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 21. Every one of them had four faces apiece, and every one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. So the number four, very important here. But take a look at Proverbs 23, verse 5. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not for riches? Certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You see that? So there's your precious stones. The, the covering cherub the wings the wheels uh, above it Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2 above it stood the seraphim same thing I believe and Eric also mentioned the other day that the number 6 which I happen to uh, to agree with Lord willing is the number of Babylon it is the number of man right above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with twain he covered his face with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did he did fly. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 22. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings and the wheels beside them. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them. Now again, keep in mind that when God is talking about glory, even in the context of Babylon coming in judgment, Babylon is glorifying God because of his righteous judgment. It's not a direct. Well, again, let, let me hold back on that. I have a couple of verses I want to I want to share. I want to offer on this. <clears throat> and I'll see if I can uh, maybe try to relate. Um, this might not post. Let me break it up. Daniel chapter 3 verses... I'm sorry, uh, chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. That's the first part. And then here's the rest of it. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle. Can you see the connection there between this verse and the ones that I was just offering? the lion the eagle and notice here in this context four great beasts came up from the sea the sea the world the earth the city the nations babylon diverse one from another the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings i beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it isn't that interesting and we're not done yet Daniel chapter 7 verse 5 the very next verse and behold another beast see God is talking about all these beasts the living creatures the four beasts I uh, behold another beast a second like to a bear and we saw that earlier right they had four faces one of them was a bear and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs and a mouth of it between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it arise devour much flesh what is the purpose of Babylon what is the purpose of Satan as God is using the the unsaved body in judgment it is to devour yeah exactly it is to destroy to devour much flesh right what about Revelation 9 9 and they had breastplates as they were breast 
breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Horses battle. Revelation 9 verse 17. And thus I saw the horses. Another word. Now God is able to use a variety of terms. Uh, only really giving us the same picture from uh, a variety of different angles, right? Thus I saw the horses and the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of iron, yacinth, brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. I will put my words in thy mouth. I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would and it shall devour them. Can you see the connection? Okay, any, any questions there? Any questions? I'm offering the wheels, the living creatures, the wheels, uh, the seraphims, the beasts, just a lot of different names uh, that God is using, I believe, to point to the corporate body, but in the context of judgment, these creatures, the living creatures, God is portraying them as, as God. Does that make sense? Babylon, in other words, you know, Babylon, Babylon coming in judgment, let's see if I can type this in, is God himself. God is doing the judging, but he is using Babylon. Can you see that? And it is the glory of God because it is a righteous judgment. God is glorified in both the judgment on the church as well as the salvation, the redemption of the body. <clears throat> okay, let's look at, I want to come back to these verses again and hopefully maybe reminding us why it is that I was a little bit reluctant to relate these verses directly to God. The, the language of them not having rest day nor night. Uh, Revelation 4 verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings. We saw the number six. I was offering just now it is the number of man. The number of Babylon. Uh, about him and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying holy, holy, holy. Lord God almighty which is and is and is to come. Which is, which was, and is, and is to come. Now, what I was saying before is that, you know, and and I'm going to share another verse where King Nebuchadnezzar is praising God in Daniel chapter four, verse thirty-seven. But historically, yeah, he did that. But today, and that's what I, I wasn't really seeing this before. I think by God's grace, uh, this might relate. It might make sense. You see, Babylon is not consciously aware of the fact that it is praising God. In other words, it's not like the unsaved are saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now stay with me. They're not saying it. They're not admitting. Because if they were, then this would be what? If they were... If God had given or provided revelation to Babylon, to the unsaved church, yeah, precisely, Eric, then it would mean that they're coming out of Babylon. If they are aware of it, if they're consciously giving glory to God, in other words, if God opens the eyes of the blind and they see God's judgment on the church and they praise God, they give glory to God, right, that is Christ revealed to the elect. But at the same time, at the same time, you see the unsaved church is praising God indirectly. In other words, the fact that God is judging Babylon, God's wrath is on the church, then that wrath, that judgment is giving God glory. God is glorifying God. Can you see that? Again, it's not an easy picture, Lord willing, but when we, when we uh, look at all the verses that have to do with judgment and salvation, that's the conclusion, at least I, I'm able to come up with, 
uh, when we look at the 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 fact that the church is also giving glory to God. And I'll see if I can share some additional verses uh, to support this. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. It is the number of man. Well, what have we been talking about? The beast. The beast, the creatures, the living creatures. It is the number of men. Six, six, six. Six hundred, three score and six. Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Okay, so Revelation 4, 8 says, They rest not day and night. So in other words, here is God's weapon, God's tool. It is under the wrath of God and giving glory to God. Can you see that? Does that make sense? Because the language of them not resting day and night, well, Christ is the rest. Christ is the rest. And especially the fact that day and night, uh, both, I believe, pointing to the day of the Lord, the night cometh when no man can work, and yet there is no rest, there is no salvation. That, I propose, is the language of, of judgment. So the four beasts, okay, not having eyes or not having rest day or night, full of eyes, saying, holy, 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 uh, these are giving glory to God, not voluntarily, not consciously, but it is the judgment that God is executing, the fact that he is using the unsaved body, that judgment is glorifying God. Uh, Eric writes, it is the same as when Legan ran in worship. Yeah, that, that's probably the, the case there, and I, and I have another Legan. I'm not sure I know what that is. Uh, did you mean Legion? Or if you have a verse, maybe you can post it. We can look at it. All right, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. So I'm offering these verses again, perhaps to support the fact that the, uh, the four beasts, the living creatures, they they have no rest day nor night and that is the language of judgment okay now let's get into the the glorifying God aspect that I was just talking about glorifying God judgment and salvation they're both in view now keep in mind that in the day of the Lord there is both judgment as well as salvation his judgment reveals his righteousness and glorifies his name. Revelation 4, 9. Let's post that again. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. Right? Now this latter part here, I, I still have to uh, look some more into it. But I think for now, if this could be the salvation side of it. When God is talking about the, uh, the four and twenty elders. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. And worship him that liveth forever and ever. And cast their crowns before the throne. Saying, uh, who shall not... No, I don't have the uh, verse 11 there, but... I think you can see perhaps what I'm getting at. Now, I could be wrong. It, it, this may also be pointing to uh, God's judgment on Babylon and the fact that God is glorified there. But I, I have to look at some more, some more information, some more verses uh, to try and tie that verse in uh, further into the language of judgment. But for now, this would not contradict, again, Lord willing, the, the, the salvation aspect of it. Because as the believers are coming out of Babylon, they too, they are giving glory to God. Right? So it doesn't, all, it doesn't always uh, have to be uh, referring to God's judgment. Revelation, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 14, verse 11. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess. Well, isn't that interesting? You know, we've looked at these verses for a long time, so that it's only uh, today it, it appears to be making sense. 
right? Looking at the, the nature of God's judgment on Babylon. So every knee shall bow. So God is, you know, even the unsaved in the church, the unsaved in the body, they give glory to God. They recognize that God is righteous in his judgment, even though they're not becoming saved. Very important. They're not becoming saved, but yet they recognize the righteousness, the holiness of God, and pronouncing judgment on Babylon. Psalm 76 10 surely the wrath of man shall praise thee what is the wrath of man or who is the wrath of man <clears throat> let not the sun go down upon your wrath right who is it that God is using against the church in anger it is Babylon Antichrist exactly Babylon the wrath of man shall praise thee. no it's not Babylon that is praising God saying holy 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 Lord God Almighty because if that were the case then it would mean that they recognize that they are under judgment and they're becoming saved they're coming out of Babylon but Babylon is also praising God it is praising the name of God because God is going forth with his army with Babylon and he is glorified in the fact that he destroys, he allows the church to destroy the church. It is a perfect and righteous judgment. And as Eric had mentioned, uh, shared this verse here with me, Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth. You see, there it is. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is a type of Babylon. It is the unsaved uh, ruler that God allowed to come against his people. So typifying judgment on the church. But yet here in the historical account, we find him praising God, giving honor and glory to him. But spiritually, it's not that the church is, uh, you know, it's not that the church is aware of the fact that they're praising God, but God knows it. God knows that through this judgment process, the church glorifies God. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Uh, Exodus chapter 14, verse 17 is another way I think we can look at it. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor. You see that? I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Why would this be so? Well, because God is also destroying Pharaoh. For this same purpose, even as I raise thee up, right? We also read in another part of the, of the Bible. God raised up Pharaoh. As a matter of fact, let me find that verse. That might also be relevant. Uh, same if I raise thee up. Can anyone think of the verse that I'm talking about? Uh, there it is. Let's see. Oh yeah, Romans chapter 9 verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. Okay. You see that? It's the same thing. Again, I believe is in view. God is in charge. He is the one who brought, uh, who raised Pharaoh. He hardened Pharaoh's heart so that Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go uh, to the point where he uh, caused them to follow them in the Red Sea. And then God destroyed them that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. All right, uh, just a couple more verses. Psalm 99 verse 1. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Who are the cherubims? He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. Thou art the anointed cherub. The cherubim is Christ. But in the day of the Lord, it is Antichrist, because God is using Antichrist to judge Babylon. Psalm 99 verse 2. The Lord is great in Zion and he is high above all the people 
And then finally, Psalm 99, verse 3. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is, it is holy. Now there I think we can look at this verse also as um, the salvation of the body, the elect coming out of Babylon. So either way, God gets the praise, whether it's uh, of judgment on the unsaved church, the body, the Babylon, or the unsaved body that is Babylon, or New Jerusalem, the fact that God is, uh, Christ is revealed to redeem them, to allow them to come out of Babylon. All right, very quick, summary, conclusion. Let's see if I can post the whole thing. So now, when we're looking at the four wings, or the four living creatures of Revelation 4 and Ezekiel 1, these appear to be pointing to the judgment side of God. That's the conclusion that I'm able to come up with by God's grace, right? They represent God in the person of Babylon. Babylon gives glory to God. Babylon praises God in judgment. Just that, you know, it's, it's the same thing, you know, with Christ coming as a thief. Behold, I come as a thief. The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Yeah, well, Christ is not the thief, but he comes as a thief. He comes through the thieves. He is using the thieves to, to destroy Babylon. So it's no different, really. It's the same principle I think we see in the rest of the Bible. And as he allows the church to destroy itself, he gets glory, honor, and praise both from Babylon as she fulfills his purpose in judgment as well as the elect that are redeemed from Babylon. Any questions? Alright, let me turn off the recorder and then we can open for uh, discussion.